If you need assistance with calibration for this method, please see calibration video titled Pump Calibration with Filter Cassette. To begin sampling, the pumps must be fully charged. If the pumps have not been fully charged within the past 48 hours, you must recharge the pumps prior to sampling. Remove the cassette from the shipping container and be sure to keep all packing material for return shipping. Remove the colored nib from the wagon wheel pattern side of the filter cassette and attach it to the pump tubing. Be sure the wagon wheel pattern is facing the pump. Recommended sampling time is 15 minutes at 1.0 liters per minute. Tip. If you anticipate very low concentrations, less than 1 ppb, you can increase the flow rate of the pump to 2.0 liters per minute and the sampling time to 30 minutes. Now, attach the pump to the worker's belt or pocket, either in back or on the side. Bring the tubing around to the front and attach the sample to the shirt collar in the breathing zone. Use the collar clip to attach the tubing in place along the shirt to restrict its movement. Remove the colored nib from the inlet side of the filter cassette. Turn on the pump and record the time to the minute that you started the pump on the field data sheet. The counter records the minutes the pump is operating and should read zero when you start the test. Remember, a field blank cassette should be collected for each sample set and should accompany the actual sampling cassettes during all periods except actual sampling. For more detailed information, watch our field blanks video. After sampling is complete, turn off the pump and record the time. Remove the filter cassette and install the colored nibs on both sides. Remove the equipment and return to the area where you performed the pre-calibration to perform post-calibration and prepare your sample for shipment. Remove the top section of the cassette using a cassette opener or screwdriver. Using tweezers, remove the top Teflon filter and place the filter into the jar containing Mopip solution. Tip: Be sure you do not accidentally carry the washer style support ring with the filter. Leave the bottom fiberglass filter and the support ring in the cassette. Reinstall the top ring and nibs. Ensure the jar and the filter cassette have the same sample ID. Reinstall the cassette into the shipping container and place in the blue foamed packing box. Twist the top on the jar to close tightly and install green tape around the jar lid to prevent the lid from loosening during shipment. Filters must remain in Mopip solution to ensure the stability of the sample. Place the jar inside the blue foamed packing box with the filter cassette. DOT regulations require that the Mopip solution be packed in these blue foam lined boxes to absorb the solvent in case of leakage. Perform a post calibration in the same manner you used to perform the pre calibration. Then record the flow rate on the pump calibration sheet. Then complete the chain of custody form. It is important that you include all the information requested in order to ensure the turnaround time of your samples. Please mark the isomer needed in the analysis requested portion on the chain of custody. Place the blue foam lined boxes inside the original shipping box and to comply with DOT regulations be sure that the label reading this package conforms to conditions specified in 49 CFR 173.4 is prominently placed on the very outside of the shipping box. Questions? Contact SGS Galson by phone or IH live chat.